Hello vinyl community! So what about another video about uh, my records or those albums that I have listened to in the last days? Let's start with this one, which is um, something rather new. This is Async, the new LP by Ryuichi Sakamoto. And uh, yeah, I got it not that long ago. Already listened to it for quite a while. Um, it's, a, it's set up as a double album with a gatefold sleeve. And um, it's wonderful music. It's very melodic, very spheric sometimes. At the same time, it's kind of a this new um, Sakamoto sound as he's been doing for the last few years. So uh, there are a lot of glitch elements in it and all kind of musical surprises. So pretty cool. Um, and yet, um, it's in parts, it's a very dreamy album, uh, very uh, sometimes a bit experimental. So, um, but it's all very calm. It's it's not a it's not a pop album. Uh, it's more. Uh, well, it's also very piano oriented, as you would expect. But at the same time, um, there's all kind of uh, interesting keyboard sounds, um, but never particularly uh, rhythm oriented, so to speak. So this is a great album, as you would expect from Mr. Sakamoto. Now let's stay with music that was released this year as well. Um, this is uh, Anson, the new album by ML. I think that's her third album. Um, now ML is a singer from Tunisia and uh, someone who uh, keeps traveling around the world and uh, recording music. Um, she's of course very well known for her great voice and her vocal abilities, but at the same time it's a kind of interesting uh, mixture of um, yeah, electronic music, uh, very rhythm oriented music, yet at the same time it's uh, uh, it's of course rooted in the... Uh, uh, well, ethnographically it's rooted in the, in the, in the traditional um, sounds of Tunisia or North Africa in general. So, very interesting album, so to speak, uh, and uh, at the same time it's very, it's very soaked with, uh, with attitude and messages and um, so if you are into that kind of thing, that's the perfect album for you. Now I bought this album um, on a concert, this was a concert with ML and uh, the Saharian band Dinariwen. So this was a nice venue, it was an open air uh, um, performance uh, in the German city of Würzburg. So it was kind of cool. And uh, while I was there, um, I also bought another album by Tina Ruen, which you can see here. So this is Emar. Um, this is uh, their previous album. It's uh, it's their second last album. I think that's the one they recorded in the USA um, at Joshua Tree, um, where probably the cover photo is made up. And uh, yeah, it's a double album. Um, great sound. I, I felt like it's a little bit... It's beautifully done. Once again, it has this... Uh, um, these uh, inner sleeves with these beautiful photographs uh, like this one. So it's all very atmospheric. With a band like Tinari Van you usually kind of know what you're gonna get. Um, yeah, and uh, I listened to L1, their latest album. Um, I think I've already shown this one uh, here on VC a while ago. So this is another beautifully uh, crafted double album. Um, a lot of nice photographs here. Um, it is probably my favorite one by Tina Riven. I don't know why. Um, I guess the, the sound is changing a little bit from album to album. Um, and. Uh, I kind of like the way they sound now. So the next one is pretty well known, another Green World by Brian Eno. 
Um, this is this new remastered uh, edition that just came out uh, not long ago, maybe a month or two ago. Um, so I kind of have to have it. Uh, I uh, had this album only on CD for some years and uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's uh, by many, many Brian Eno fans, um, it's been described as one of their favorite, if not their favorite album. I'm a little bit torn on that. I mean, I like it. Um, it's an interesting mixture of, uh, of sort of his uh, vocal work, his sort of a glam rock music on one hand and already... Uh, deeply uh, going into the direction of ambient music um, and you have kind of both next to each other on this album. I really like the ambient stuff. Um, to be honest, I was never that much of a fan of sort of his rock slash pop music. Um, I have no problems with it. I'm, I listen to it from time to time and I like some of the tracks. Um, but it was never really a center of my attention. So I like this record, but uh, for me it's more like uh, like a... Uh, a checkered album but uh, there are more of those uh, made by Brian Eno actually um, yeah uh, on the other hand I find it strangely complementary with the album he made last year The Ship um, which I find quite excellent but uh, for some strange reasons I really think like another green world and the ship kind of kind of really fit fit well together there is something complementary about them I don't know why um, now this is a wonderful edition uh, by warp um, as a, again as a gatefold design with a really strong graphic material um, it comes with these uh, um, visual uh, with these photographs, with this artwork. Um, as far as I know, this I think derives from uh, all those uh, sort of uh, auto generated uh, installation systems that Brian Eno is developing and, uh, and using for. Uh, for exhibitions. So this is really a lovely al album from the beginning to the end, um, especially the the eponymous uh, The Ship, the major track on this record. Um, it's quite fascinating and is somehow also a new new frontier of ambient music that uh, Eno is reaching out here, combining ambient with vocals. Uh, well, it's quite powerful. So this is really a good album. And uh, one that uh, I will not put away that quickly. Um, and as usual with the uh, Eno Records at Warp, it comes with the MP3 download card. So uh, that's a bit, it's quite practical for me. I'm actually using this a lot um, because um, I do tend to, uh, most of the time I'm working at home in different rooms. And uh, so um, I'm not always uh, kind of uh, spending my time around the record player. Yeah, that's it for now. Um, just two more things. Just for the sake of fun, I bought two books. Um, kind of um, just for, for kicks. Um, this one is uh, Pictures of an Exhibitionist by Keith Emerson. This is Keith Emerson's biography. I always wanted to read that. Now that being said, had I bought it, had I bought this book like 10, 12 years ago, I probably would have paid a tenner for it or something like that. But since then, it's been sold out, and I've been like, I had been observing uh, this book on Amazon and sort of a second book platforms, and everywhere you look, you kind of see it for hundred dollars and sometimes even three hundred for, for totally crazy. I and mean, this is a paperback. There should not be an instance where a paperback book is being sold for three hundred dollars. It's disgusting. <laughs> and, um, so I never really uh, bought it because I thought it's totally insane. But um, I thought I will wait my time until someone offers this at least under sixty dollars, which is still a shame, actually. But um, 
well, what can you do? So uh, I felt grandiose and uh, just clicked on the button and here it is. Um, a totally overpriced book. But um, I have just started to read it and it's pretty interesting and nice and maybe I will talk more about it when I'm through. But what, I, what I've done um, just for fun is I bought the book Lucky Man by Mr. Greg Lake which is a kind of a funny idea because now uh, I have two biographies that are kind of covering the same time and the same band and um, I'm pretty um, curious where these two books are not particularly aligned <laughs> and which events or situations they may describe in a quite different way. We will see. Um, Again, I've just peeked a bit into this one, so uh, I can't say for now. We will see. So that's it, and uh, hope you enjoyed it a little bit. Um, my uh, broken English rambling, it's not for everyone, I guess. And um, yeah, when I find time, I'll do this again. So see you, and uh, keep it spinning. Bye-bye.